Okay, so in this video, with the help of the mean value theorem, we are going to prove that if you find one antiderivative of a given function, all the other antiderivatives can be obtained from the one you found, plus some arbitrary constant. But before we do so, we'll need the help of the mean value theorem. So if you remember, suppose you have again a differentiable function on AB that is also continuous on the closed interval from A to B, we have the following result. If you have f of b minus f of a over b minus a, that is the slope, the average slope of the function on the interval from a to b, you can find some point c where the derivative of the function at c is the average slope of the function. Now c is a point between a and b. And you can again visualize this quite easily. Suppose your function looks like this, and this is point a, x equals a, x equals b. This is a graph of y equals f of x, so therefore this is f at a, this is f at b, so your y-axis. And you can of course look at connecting these two points with a straight line. And you can ask, well what is the slope of this line? Well, change in y over the change in x. The change in y, delta y, is the total change in y, so f of b minus f of a. The change in x is, of course, the total change along the x-axis, b minus a. So the slope of this line, connecting point a f of a with b f of b, change in y over the change in x, change in y being f of b minus f of a over the change in x b minus a. That's the left hand side of the mean value theorem and I look at the right hand side. So we have the slope of this line, the derivative of the function by definition is the slope at the given point of the tangent line. So what we're seeing is there must be a tangent line at c between a and b, so there must be a point somewhere between a and b where the derivative of the function is the same as the slope of this line. Well, lines have the same slopes if they are parallel. And you can see from the graph it looks about like it's this point. So if you take this point c and draw at this point the tangent line to the function, Then by definition, the slope of this tangent line is the derivative of the function at the point of tangent c, x equals c. And again, this is very intuitive geometrically. We can find at least one point, there might be several, but there's at least one point where the slope of the tangent line, being the derivative of the function at the point of tangent c, equals the average slope of the function over the interval from a to b. And again, by choosing c just right, the lines are parallel, therefore they have the same slope. And that is the well-known mean value theorem. Let me just rewrite this, and we'll use this to prove something, again, very intuitive, but that will be crucial in our study of antiderivatives. What I'll do is I'll simply multiply across by b minus a. So from the mean value theorem, I can write MVT for mean value theorem, the total change in y, so f of b minus f of a, over the interval from a to b can be given by the derivative at some point in the interval times the change in x, b minus a. Okay, so keep this in mind. And then we'll use this to prove the following result, which is very intuitive. What we'll prove is, if the derivative of a function is zero everywhere, the function must be a constant function. Now think of why this is, again, very intuitive. The derivative is the rate of change of the function. It tells you how the function is changing. If the derivative is always zero, the function is never changing, 
Therefore, the only conclusion is it is a constant function. So let's state this, and then we'll prove it very easily with the mean value theorem. So if, call the function f, so if our function has a derivative that is 0 everywhere, so for all values of x, then the function must be constant. So f of x must be equal to c for a fixed constant c for any x. And again, this is very intuitive. The rate of change is always 0. The function is never changing, so it must be a constant function. So let's prove this. And the proof is very easy from the mean value theorem. Suppose we look at the graph of our function, and we look at just two values. Suppose we look at the value at x equals a and the value at x equals b. Let's just apply the mean value theorem. The result is if we consider f of b minus f of a, we can find a point c in the middle of the interval, or somewhere between a and b. So f of b minus f of a is the derivative at c times b minus a. But by assumption, the derivative for any value of x is 0. So f prime of c must be equal to 0. And so 0 times b minus a, whatever b minus a is, the result is 0. So what is the implication here? f of b minus f of a is equal to 0. Send f of a on this side. Therefore, f of b must be equal to f of a. So if you think about the graph, this says that the value of f at b is the same as the value of f at a. And now, think about what that implies. a and b here were arbitrary. So imagine fixing a and letting b change over all possible real values. We are saying that the value of f at any point b, we can change b as we want, is the same as the value of f at a, if you think of a being fixed as you move b, the value of the function anywhere must be the value of the function at a. So at any other point, b that you choose as you let b vary over all the real lines, f of b at any point must be f of a. Well, as you piece all these points together, the value is never changing, it's always f of a. What you get, obviously, is just a horizontal line. So the function always has the same value f of a, no matter where you look, so the function is constant, and that's our conclusion. And so, with this, we can now easily prove that once we find all, once we find one antiderivative of a given function, all the others are simply vertical translations of the antiderivative we found. Keeping in mind that if the derivative of a function is zero everywhere, the function must be a constant function. So now let's prove what we've just said about the antiderivative of a given function, giving us all other antiderivatives. So assume we find one antiderivative of the given initial function. So we let f of x be an antiderivative of the original function lowercase f of x. So we find one antiderivative of the original function. Then here's the conclusion. If uppercase g of x is any other antiderivative, of lowercase f of x, then the only possibility is that g of x equals f of x plus some constant. So the result says quite simply, once you find one antiderivative of the original function, 
all the other antiderivatives have to be the one you found, f of x plus some constant. And the proof of this will be very short with what we've already done before. So let's consider the following function. So let h of x, a new function, be the difference between g and f. So uppercase g minus uppercase f. Then, what is the derivative of this function? Well, it will be g prime minus f prime. But by assumption, both uppercase f and uppercase g are antiderivatives of the lowercase f of x, which means by definition, g prime and f prime are both equal to f of x. And f of x minus itself, of course, is 0. And this is true for all values of x. And so look at what we're saying. We have now a function whose derivative is equal to 0 for all values of x. So the rate of change of h is always 0. h never changes. Therefore, h must be a constant function. But what was h of x? It was quite simply g of x minus f of x. add f of x on both sides, which proves that any other antiderivative, uppercase g of lowercase f, must be the initial antiderivative we found plus a constant. So there you go. Which means if you're looking for finding all antiderivatives of a given function, once you find one, add an arbitrary constant and you get all the others. So let's go back to what we discussed. The simple example that led us to this result, we said if you take x squared over 2, this is an antiderivative of x, as the derivative of this is x. And if we add an arbitrary constant, we now get all antiderivatives of x. As we allow c to range over all possible real numbers. So before what we had, before we proved this result, was that x squared over 2 plus c gave us an infinite number of antiderivatives of x, but there could have been different ones we didn't know, but now we do know. The only way to have an antiderivative of x is to have x squared over 2 plus some constant. So if you think of it, even though for any given function there are an infinite number of antiderivatives, to find all of them is quite easy. If you find one antiderivative, add an arbitrary constant, and you've got all antiderivatives of the given function. And that's it.